Samsung seems to have adopted the FE or Fan Edition as a permanent fixture in its range of devices. As with the Galaxy S20 FE, the S21 FE arrives as if popped out of the mold from the S21, with a cheaper price, a few tweaks here and there, but overall the same experience. The thing is, the timing of the arrival of the latest Fan Edition does raise some questions. After all, the S21 models have been around long enough now that they've been discounted heavily and are practically the same price, and also, the S22 is about to launch. So does this delayed handset hold any real worth? I'm Cam Bunton from Pocketlint, and this is our review. And while you're here, if you do like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, helps us a lot. Tap subscribe and the notification bell, and that way you don't miss any of our videos. The Samsung Galaxy S21 FE carries the same overall design as the Samsung Galaxy S21 models, particularly the S21 and S21 Plus. The size of this phone means it sits between those two devices and the design differences are very minor. However, there is a slight difference. The frame of the S21 FE runs straight around the edges of the phone, while the S21 and 21 Plus, it extends around the edges of the corner camera bump too. On the FE, the camera bump is molded from the same piece of plastic as the backplate and more like the 2021 Galaxy A models. The other minor difference is that the S21 FE is pretty much flat on the rear, whereas the S21 curves slightly into the frame on the trailing edge. Given the size of the S21 FE, this doesn't make much of a difference. Indeed, we like the symmetry of the design. There are four colour options, olive, graphite, lavender and white. So there's not the same massive variety like there was with the S20 FE. And we suspect the graphite, which is really just black, shown here, will be the most popular. It's a good looking phone despite having a plastic back and it feels solidly built too. And the matte finish is very welcome. To give some protection, there's an IP68 waterproof rating so it can be fully submerged up to a meter and a half of water while the display is covered with Gorilla Glass Victus, which is the top grade from Corning and should help keep the scratches off. Now onto that display, and with a 6.4 inch screen, the Samsung S21 FE slots in between the two smaller S21 models. It's a flat display too, with a single punch hole camera that's center aligned at the top of the panel. As it's customary from Samsung, it's an AMOLED panel, or as Samsung calls it, a dynamic AMOLED 2X display, with a choice of 60Hz or 120Hz refresh rates. This doesn't offer the same adaptive refresh rates offered by the S21 models, not that it seems to make a huge difference in use, but it does carry that AMOLED look that's so favoured in smartphones with deep blacks and vibrant colours. On the flip side, it can ramp up the brightness to cut through reflections, so it looks good pretty much all the time, whether you're indoors or out. One of the changes compared to the previous versions though is that there's a slight reduction in the width of the top bezel. And another one interesting thing is that Samsung ships the FE with on-screen navigation as default, meaning you have to switch to Android's gesture navigation in the settings if you would rather do that. The narrow bezel at the bottom of the phone makes gesture navigation a little more fiddly than some devices we've used, and occasionally we found ourselves scrabbling to swipe out of an app with the S21 FE not registering what we're doing after a few attempts. There's also an in-display fingerprint sensor, which is a good performer, quick to register prints and quick to unlock. So we have no complaints on that front. Onto hardware and performance and true to form, Samsung says this phone has an octa-core five nanometer processor without naming the specific chip. Again, it's a device that might have a Qualcomm Snapdragon in one region of the world, but Exynos in the other. So it's not identical and the one you get depends on where you live. But there will be both Snapdragon and Exynos versions with 888 in Europe and the US, but with an Exynos 2100 getting listed in some other regions. Either way, the S21 FE performs like a flagship device. It's fast to open apps. We don't think it's the best for gaming as Samsung's gaming editions don't seem to be quite as well considered as some competitors. But generally speaking, this device has no problem offering a premium experience in the most demanding apps. There are choices to be made for RAM and storage. You get a six gigabyte, 128 gigabyte model or eight and 256. Or though that lifts the price, making it very close to the S21 proper. There's also no option for micro SD storage expansion, which there was on the previous device, so that's a loss you'll feel on the storage front. The battery is a 4,500 mAh cell with support for 25 watt wired charging and 15 watt wireless charging. These aren't the fastest rates out there and there's no charger in the box. So if you want faster charging, you'll have to head out and buy a compatible charger. 
Battery life has generally been good enough. Samsung isn't renowned for longevity from its devices, with the brightness of the display often having a big impact on the battery, but this phone will see you through a typical day. Onto cameras, and there's a fairly predictable set of cameras and lenses on the back of the S21 FE. The main camera is Samsung's dual pixel 12 megapixel sensor with an f stop 1.8 aperture, which we've seen on a lot of Samsung phones, and it's similar to what's on the S21 and S21 Plus. One change is the telephoto lens, which here uses a 12 megapixel sensor rather than the 64 megapixel one that's in the S21. In function, the S21 FE is a comprehensive camera offering with plenty to satisfy smartphone photographers. There are no junk lenses here, no depth or low res macro nonsense, they all pull their weight. The zoom is useful, but at 30 times digital, you're left with a pretty mushy image. So you're better sticking to way less than maximum to get the best results. Across the cameras, you can see Samsung's user interface is working hard to give you a better shot, whether that's the stabilization options on the far end of the zoom or the HDR on the front facing camera. This will snap a picture of you and then take that overexposed white sky and return it to blue. The aim being to give you photos that look good. At times, things are a little richer than in real life, but that means what might have been a dull photo gets a little pop and we can't complain about that too much. As far as overall performance goes, the S21 FE is close to the S21 models we saw earlier in the year, with things like portrait mode putting in a solid performance. And the same applies to low light photos. While we pick Google Pixel 6 over the S21 FE for such situations, you can still get great results from this Samsung. Now, just a quick note on software. The software loadout of the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE is up to date, arriving with Android 12 out of the box. Samsung has also done well with updates over the past generation of phones, which bodes well for the future of this device in coming years. It comes with Samsung's One UI 4.0, rolling together some of the latest Android features with Samsung's latest tweaks. We've long been fans of Samsung's software offering as it provides plenty of options for customization, including some lifted from Android's new Material U offering, where you can easily change the color palette to match the wallpaper. As an end sort of takeaway, the S21 FE is pretty much everything you would expect it to be. It takes the most important features from the Galaxy S21 models and presents them in a slightly reformed and cheaper form. It would have made a lot more sense if the fan edition had launched in September 2021 though, and it's unavoidable that you can probably pick up the slightly smaller S21 for around the same price. With the S22 launch just around the corner, set for February, some may wish to wait and see what else Samsung has in store instead. But for those looking for a Samsung phone right now, the S21 FE still hits the most of the experience points that they would want irrelevant of the badly timed release and inevitable and extensive competition. Let me know what you think of the latest fan edition phone in the comments, or you can get hold of me on Twitter, I'm at Cam Bunton on there. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, it helps us a great deal. Subscribe and tap the notification bell, and that way you don't miss any of our videos. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.